Hey guys, I wanna talk a little bit about variable speed HVAC systems. So just in this house we're building and did a video about the rough end stage of HVAC, HVAC uh, which is heating, ventilation, air conditioning. And I decided I wanted to do a quick video on the variable speed systems that we use. Uh, I think this is really interesting if you are building a home, if you are going to replace the HVAC system in your house, which someday we're all gonna need to do that. I mean, ultimately, th this is equipment, right? These are machines, they will not run forever, and someday you're gonna have to change it out and go with something else. I always say, I'm in Texas, I'm talking about the type of systems we use here, which air conditioning is air conditioning, but heating can be very different in a lot of different parts of the country. So everything here is forced air heat. We are using air handlers with furnaces in them, uh, sometimes heat pump systems, but it's all doing the same thing. It's heating the air, it's blowing it out the ducts. You do get in other parts of the country where the heating may be um, done through radiators and ge geothermal, radiant, these kind of things that are different. So just talking about what we do here. The variable speed units to me are a huge benefit. When we talk about HVAC systems, and let's just say air conditioning to be, you know, make it easy for everybody. Air conditioned systems in central heat and air conditioned houses for all these years have generally been what we would call single speed. That means they turn on and they run at one speed, which is full blast, right? The Thermostat is the brains to your unit. You punch in, I want it at 72 degrees in this house. And when, and it's taking the temperature of that area. And when it gets above that, it kicks on, turns on the air conditioner until it cools down and goes below that set point that you've gotten, it shuts off. And then slowly your house gets warm again until it kicks on and the cycle goes over and over. We actually call that cycling. So it runs, then it turns off, but it's running full blast. So I was thinking about this little analogy. Some of the other air conditioners that we have that we deal with every day are always variable speed. Think about being in your car. You've got probably four to five, you know, that dial that can give you multiple speeds on your air conditioning. You can set your air conditioning to the coldest level, maybe it's blowing a 60 degree air out of those vents, but you can also adjust how hard it blows, right? That is a variable speed air conditioner. Very common in cars, common with window units, things like that, but not house systems. Why is that better? Well, let's think about that car analogy. Imagine that you have a single speed unit in your car. You turn on your air conditioning and it runs full blast. Now, I'm standing here in Texas, it's 98 degrees right now. So if I'm in my car, I probably want it on full blast, right? I'm gonna get into my truck when I'm done here and I'm gonna turn it up full blast until I'm cool enough in that truck, which could take 10 minutes in this kind of weather. But what happens when it's not that hot? There are other times you need air conditioning but it's just not as extreme, and especially if you're living up in the north or the northeast or the northwest where you just don't get as hot as we do here. Maybe it's 79 degrees. You need air conditioning. You get into your car between the sun coming through the glass and everything, it's going to get warm if your windows are up. But if you turned it on and it ran full blast, what would happen? You'd get cold pretty quick, right? It's too much. It's blowing, you know, full speed. You're gonna drive for two minutes and you're gonna go, okay, I'm getting cold now, you're gonna shut it off. That's what the house single speed units are doing. And that is not as efficient as a system running longer and slower. And I'll go into the reasons why that is. So a single speed unit, which millions upon millions of houses have because they are the less expensive type of air conditioner to use, but they are not as efficient as variable speed units. So one of the inefficiencies is when they turn on, they use a lot of electricity. So every time an air conditioner turns on, a house air conditioner turns on, it is using a lot of energy, right? Then there are other factors involved. As I said, especially the better condition, or sorry, better insulated a house is, and we do these foam insulation packages, the homes are very tight, they've become very efficient, good windows, good doors. The single speed units will run for a while and then shut off. 
wait till it slowly gets warm and turn on again. And there is a lot of cycling happening. So now that is kicking on and off and using a lot of electricity. So it's not super efficient from that standpoint. It is also not from a human standpoint, keeping the environment um, as consistent. Just like the car analogy, it turns on, it runs for a while, then it turns off. So your house is getting cooler, then it's getting warmer, and then it's getting cooler and it's getting warmer, turning on and off. Another issue, and a big one with these foam houses, is humidity control. Uh, one thing that naturally an air conditioner does is it pulls humidity out of the air. However, when it's not running, it can't do that. So when a system is cycling on and off, and this has been a known problem with very tight houses, is they can build up too much humidity. And that's because the system is essentially short cycling. When the weather isn't super warm, it'll just run for a little bit and then it'll stay off for a long time. It'll run for a little bit. So it is not able to continually run and pull the humidity out of the air the way we want it to. Lastly is just indoor air quality. We've got filters on our systems. We are also recirculate, recirculating air, which is helpful. I mean, air can get stale in certain parts of the house. Maybe you're burning a candle over here. The dog's over in this room shaking all the time with dog dander. Part of what an HVAC system's doing is recirculating the air in the house. And as it gets drawn back to the air handler, it goes through a filter and it filters it, right? Well, there's no filtering happening if the system's not running. So again, millions of single speed units out there. There will be millions more done over the years. But the more years I've used variable speed units, the more I would say I think the industry should go to everybody using some form of variable speed unit. There are what we call almost infinite, infinitely variable speed units. They can run from really slow and all points in between to full speed. There are staged units. There's some that are just two staged. They've got a slow mode and a high mode. Even that's better than just a single speed unit because at least it can run slow. Some of them just start up slow and then eventually we'll get to you know, the full speed. But they are very beneficial for all the things I just talked about. When it comes to the cycling aspect, what you can expect with a various variable speed air conditioner is that it will run longer but slower. The first time I ever put one of these in, the homeowner said, Steve, the thing runs all the time. And logically, he's thinking, I'm spending so much more money because the system is always running. But what's it not doing? It's not starting up under full power and using all that electricity. It's running much slower, especially in the milder times of the year. What is that doing? That is doing all the things I just mentioned the single speed unit is not as good at. It is continually running, therefore controlling the humidity, pulling humidity out of the air. It is keeping your indoor air temp temperature more consistent now because it's not that I'm running full blast and shutting off thing. It's running slower. And so it's just keeping it closer to the set point all the time. And it is also continually filtering and cycling the air. So an air conditioner running more but slower is better. So that's what a variable speed unit does. This house has it. It's pretty much the standard that we use in all of our foam houses now. Again, with our big concern generally being humidity, uh, they control the humidity well, and I just think they are so much more efficient, especially at the times of the year when it's, it's mild. If this house were completely finished and it's 98 degrees outside, this good chance the system's gonna run full blast anyway because it's very hot especially if somebody turns a thermostat down to some unreasonable temperature. And when I say unreasonable, it's 98 degrees outside and you want it 70 in your house. There's actually guidelines about how cold a system is supposed to get a house. And that's actually beyond what the standards say. But a lot of times these things can do it because we're well insulated and all that. But that said, it would run full blast. But if it were fall and it's 78 degrees outside, we still need air conditioning. There's a solar load on the house, sun's coming through the windows. We need air conditioning, but we don't need it running like that. So it can run slow, long, do all those beneficial things I talked about. And um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, they aren't that much more expensive. Now there are some gold plated units and I've done some of them and uh, they do run a little bit more, but I even think those are kind of way 
worth their weight in gold, especially if you go outside. Um, we've got another house. We've got the Train XV20 units. You can walk outside and stand next to the outside compressor unit, you know, the ones that have the fan, and barely hear it. I was walking around that house and I walked by it and realized I was hearing something and it's like, that thing's running. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I guess I hadn't been by one of those XV20s in a while um, because we all know the ones that are kind of the low end that turn on and you can hear them and you know, they're kind of brutal. The higher end you get with these systems, the quieter they will be with those outside compressors also. So whenever possible in our new homes, we are definitely doing variable speed units. If you have to replace the units in your house, at a minimum, get at least a two-stage system. But if you can, you know, handle spending some more money, I highly recommend a variable speed unit. Um, you know, you can even, in theory, upsize the system a little bit because it can run slower if it needs to. So when I talk about the cycling, that is something, there's a lot of confusion about how HVAC works. And I've had a lot of customers over the years say they wanted me to upsize the unit. Hey, my house gets a single five ton or four ton, but I want you to put a four and a half or a five ton unit in there because man, I can make it cooler when it's you know hot outside. That's true, you could do that, but guess what? It's gonna cycle a whole lot more, especially in the mild times because it's too big of a system. And that's why these companies, they have to run all kinds of calculations on loads. You don't want to oversize single speed systems because they will just cycle on and off and they will not control all those things I just talked about. So go for a variable speed HVAC system if you can. I appreciate you guys watching the videos. See you in the next one.